Good morning all. This is my penny organ. Uh, so called because it has these coins. They're not pennies, they're Japanese 50 yen coins. Chosen because they have a hole in the middle, so I didn't have to drill one. There was an issue over whether I was allowed to drill through the uh, face of a head of state, but uh, this solves that issue. Now currently it's set up uh, with eight of these running into one of these touch switch modules. This is the MPR121. It's a 12 input touch switch. I'm only using eight of the inputs because my plan is to use these first four for another four coins up here. They might have to be Norwegian Krona though because I've run out of uh, 50 yen coins for function selects. Uh, but these are going to be used for playing notes. Now currently um, I'm just using the Arduino's built-in tone function to drive a piezo and uh, these frequencies are put into the tone function when you touch the switches. Enough chat, let's see what it sounds like. So it uh, just generates a simple scale in the key of C. Now this is all fine and dandy but it sounds appalling because uh, the tone command just generates simple square waves. They're going to the peak, so there's no real amplification here. So it's sort of rather quiet, very coarse sounding, particularly these high notes. It's almost as if the pizza thing is rattling or something. I don't know, but anyway, I want to switch to this. This is a, a little frequency generator module based on the analog devices AD9833. It can generate sine waves, triangle waves, uh, and square waves. Well, all square waves, because it can't do all at the same time. Um, it's capable of very wide range of frequencies well outside of the audio range. It's really designed as a frequency synthesizer for uh, radio frequencies, but it should be fine in the audio range. I just want to get this working, um, and then I'm going to mount, so, well, today I'm going to mount that there, but later possibly I'm going to mount three more of these because I want this organ to be four note polyphonic so you can press and hold down uh, up to four notes and it will play them on four little frequency generators. Then there'll be a system of very crude audio mixing to mix the outputs of these things and that'll go into some sort of speaker. But today I just want to mount this on here, get it wired up to the board. This uses the SPI interface well, a simplified version of SPI, just a simple clock data and enable. Um, so it should be a relatively easy thing to hook up. But the data sheet for this is quite complex in terms of loading all the registers. And I am struggling a bit to understand it. So we'll also have a look at that. Now, just a quick word on these MPR121 modules. This one I took out of this uh, penny organ because, as you can probably see from my use of the wires, um, input 6 and 7 didn't work on this module so I then um, I bought two more of these modules so I wired this one up and um, this one was even worse only four of these inputs actually worked at all uh, I can't remember which four they were now but uh, I thought well is this some sort of epidemic of failed NPR 121s and then uh, finally I put this third one on it was my last one and all 12 inputs of this work. So I don't know whether there's an issue with the way the chip is being uh, soldered down onto the board. Possibly pins are uh, soldered together or, or there's some issue with this. I don't know what it is, but that one doesn't work. This one fortunately does, so I can uh, carry on with the project. Now, i just got to get an idea of how everything's going to fit on here. Um, actually, I suppose these Norwegian Krona, uh, one Krona coins, I don't know whether... Norway, I should know this, I suppose, is now using the Euros. I don't know. Is Norway using the Euro or are they still using Krona? But anyway, for Norwegian Krona, now these are going to be the select functions, possibly for things like selecting sine um, or triangle wave or even square wave, uh, possibly for other things. Uh, when this becomes a chord organ, this these could select uh, major, minor, seventh and things like that. Uh, but anyway, those are going to go there. Now I need to be able to fit four of these tone generators in a row here. Um, so I probably have to squeeze that up pretty close to the touch sensor switch. I probably should have put that slightly over. But uh, let's mark some holes, drill them. That looks like that's going to fit four of those in there. don't think that'll be a problem. 
Right, I've marked a couple of holes on here, now I'm just going to stab them to create, not music, to create my centre points for mounting this thing. And then when I stabbed them with my steely knife, not really my steely knife, come out. I'll drill them. Right, try and drill this without destroying anything and in such a way that the camera can see it. Let's try not to go right through and drill right through my green mat. Lovely. Right, I've made holes for four modules on here. Might as well do the work now rather than later. So I've uh, fitted the module to there. Now I need to take it back out in order to fix the header pins in. Uh, I've just checked on the status of the Norwegian uh, Krona. Yes, it seems that Norway doesn't use the Euro. They're still using the Krona, which is excellent. Right, uh, okay, so I need to take this out and uh, see which what the pin arrangement is. So on the back of here, we've got VCC and digital ground. So that'll be five volts and zero volts from the Arduino. Then there's uh, S data, S clock and F sync. Now F sync is frequency sync, but it also works as a chip enable. You take it low, then you send serial data on data in clock, and then you take F sync high. And uh, at the point you take F sync high, the change in frequency register, if that is what you've sent, will be implemented and the new frequency will start coming out of uh, the output pin. So here we've got analog ground and output next to each other so that pair of uh, connections can go off to my audio system. Now probably initially I'll just put this on the scope because um, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with the audio out of this yet. I think it's going to be the full 5 volt swing but I'm not sure and uh, I don't want to hook it up to an audio system that expects one volt peak to peak and uh, massively overload it. So I'll just scope that to see what comes out, get an idea of the wave shapes and all that sort of thing. So uh, let's solder in that header. So let's solder these. Now someone's just written to me, uh, Henk has just written to me, saying, can you do a tutorial on how to read data sheets? Well, it wouldn't be very interesting, would it? But I will be having to read the data sheet for this in a few moments to try and uh, send data to it. He also said, what's MSB and LSB? Well, they're most significant bit and least significant bit, uh, or possibly most significant byte and least significant byte. Right, that's the little module mounted there and the uh, header pins soldered on. Now annoyingly all the um, markings for what these pins are are on the underside. So I've had to make this little uh, post-it note. But VCC and digital ground. Digital ground and analog ground are actually linked together on the underside of the board with a small bridge uh, in such a way that you could cut that. But uh, yeah, currently they're linked. So I'm just going to put 5 volts on VCC and 0 volts on D ground. And I can take that using this wire uh, which currently goes to the peak, so I won't be needing that anymore. Sensibly, I put a little uh, plug and socket arrangement on there. Uh, this wire, I will need to um, move it from digital pin DH to VCC, if there is a spare VCC. No. Oh, actually, yes, there's a whole block of VCCs and grounds here. And I'm going to power this up, and there is a reset procedure for this, but it is possible that it might just put out a sine wave just from getting power on. So I'll get the scope out, hook it up and just see if anything comes out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I've uh, just put power to the module and scoped to the analog output. And uh, we do actually have a sine wave. The frequency is 97.7 kilohertz. Is that kilohertz? Uh, yeah, so it wouldn't be audible anyway, but it's a nice looking sine wave, nice and smooth. Um, presumably random frequency courtesy of just having um, random data in the registers. Let's see if I take the power off and put it back on whether I get another random frequency. No, I get the same frequency so um, actually let's give it more of a chance to lose the data in those registers. So does it just sort of randomly come on to 97.7 kilohertz every time you power on? 
I'm surprised actually that there's no internal reset that mutes the output because that could be rather strange having it come up with that uh yeah no it's still 97.7 kilohertz anyway it obviously is producing uh, an output so now we need to start talking to the various registers in here uh, to try and get that frequency altered uh, lowered certainly to get it within the audio range so i need a little three pin cable to go on to s data s clock and f sync hook that up to uh, three pins on the uh, arduino here down here digital pins and uh, start talking to this thing now interestingly i've just noticed that um, the amplitude of this is only about three divisions and it's on 200 millivolts per division so it's only actually putting out 600 uh, millivolts of output and in fact the peak to peak there says 600 and it's bobbing around but 620 or 30 uh, millivolts of output so it's less than a volt for a 5 volt device Now I don't believe there's any amplitude control in here It'd be fantastic if there were because then I could do um, envelope shaping but I don't think there is so maybe the output is um, much smaller than the 5 volt uh, of the power supply um, in which case that could go straight into an audio device uh, 600 millivolts isn't going to hurt an audio amplifier interesting uh, turn up Right, I've connected a 3-pin cable uh, from F-Sync, S-Clock and S-Data through to pins 8, 9 and 10. And uh, when I did that, things sort of glitched and now the frequency on the scope has changed to uh, 141 kilohertz. But this is just nonsense because this chip is not yet initialized. I now need to build a little Arduino sketch for writing to that chip and uh, see if I can get some initial control commands sent over to uh, set this chip up. So I'll build that sketch now, or the skeleton of it. So here's my Arduino sketch. Um, I've got it AD9833. F-Sync on pin 8, S-Clock on pin 9, S-Data on pin 10. It's going to do some um, digital writes to preset the uh, F-Sync and S-Clock lines, then it turns the three pins into outputs. Now the first thing it does in this uh, waveform diagram here is to set F-Sync low when clock is high. That's why I've preset clock to high. So F-Sync goes low, then we need to do two shift outs because you have to send out 16 bits of data. It's uh, MSB first by the look of it because D15 goes out first, then D14 all the way down to D0. So two bytes will go out, that's my 16 bits. Uh, that's just rubbish data at the moment. And then F-Sync goes high. So what I wanna do is put out uh, two bytes which just do something. And I think the starting point is going to be a reset. So in the data sheet, uh, if you put out uh, D15 and D14, both as zeros, then you're putting out a control word, I suppose it is. D13 down to D0 are the control bits. And then there's a giant table of what all these control bits do. But the most important thing for me, I think, is this reset. Uh, reset equals one resets internal registers to zero, which corresponds to an analog output of mid scale. And that should turn off the oscillator, or at least the uh, sine wave, I would think. So I want D8 is a 1 and D15 and 14 are both zeros. So hexadecimal uh, zero, 01 for the first byte, in other words the first 8 bits, means that D8 is a 1, D15 and 14 will both be zeros. Uh, the lower part of it doesn't really matter. So putting that out should reset this chip. So let's uh, compile that and give it a try. Uh, so let's do this live. So I'm just hitting the upload button now and it's compiling. This is my first compilation, so it will take a bit longer as it pulls in all the libraries. Sorry, this is boring. Right, it's uploading now. Some lights flashed. Oh, there's a result. That's actually uh, shut off the output. Very pleased with that. Right, now I've brought in a load of code uh, from another sketch over here, which is for driving the NPR121 touch switch. And I've said uh, if a, uh, a key is touched, 
so that's me touching one of those uh, 50 yen coins, put a zero in the, uh, what would it be, bit eight, so that releases the reset. And if a key is released, put a one in there, so that forces a reset. So what this does is if I touch a button, it will enable the uh, sine wave output. And if I release a button, it will disable the sine wave output. Let's see if that works. Uh, so the way this works is if I touch a button, a key, it should enable the sine wave, which it has. If I let go of that, um, that then re-implements the reset. So I can switch on the sine wave and I can switch off the sine wave. Uh, what I'm doing here really is just putting off the moment where I try and fully understand the data sheet and uh, allocate frequencies to the uh, sine wave so that I can hear this music again. But that's a start. Uh, just one thing's not quite right here. If I hit a button, the sine wave turns on. If I let go, it goes to zero. Now that shows it at the trigger point, which is the midpoint. But if I keep doing it, when it goes to flat line, it goes to different points. So some are high and some are low. And I thought when you set a reset, this thing set the output to the uh, midpoint line. It doesn't appear to be doing that. It seems to be just stopping the sine wave and stopping a, a, a DC value of whatever the last value entered into the DAC was. So not quite sure why that's happening. Yeah, it says here, reset equals one resets internal registers to zero, which corresponds to an analog output of mid-scale. That doesn't appear to be happening. This function is explained further in table 13. Well, I better look at that then. Right, well, here's table 13, but not a lot of extra explanation. Uh, zero, no reset applied. One, internal registers reset. Yeah, thanks for that. And this is where it gets difficult. Um, I'm putting all zeros for all these bits here. Uh, so, for example, this output bit enable, the function of this bit in association with D1 mode, which is this bit here, is to control what is output at the Vout. This is explained further in table 15. Right, I'll have to look at that, if it gives me any useful explanation. Uh, so I'll be having output bit enable is zero. The DAC is connected to Vout. Well, it certainly seems to be because I'm getting this... Uh, voltage which is random each time I let go of the uh, 50 yen coin. The mode bit determines whether it is sinusoidal or a ramp bit. Okay, mode. This bit is used in association with output bit enable. The function of this bit is to control what is output of the Vout. Okay, well let's look at what... Right, when mode is zero, because it will be, the sine ROM is used to convert the phase information into amplitude information, which results in a sinusoidal signal at the output. That doesn't explain why I'm getting a why I'm getting a flat line of a voltage which is clearly coming from the well sine rom and the DAC. I mean, I just have to read all this and further understand how it all works. Oh, one thing I have noticed uh, it says here when mode equals one, the sine rom is bypassed, resulting in a triangle output from the DAC. Oh, well that could be a quick win, couldn't it? So mode needs to be one. So that's bit D one. So I need to set, uh, now this is bit D1, so it's down here. So this will be one, zero. So it'll be two, I think, in hexadecimal for that lower four bits. Yeah, so it'll be 02 hexadecimal. Let's try that. Hmm, no, no quick win there. That's still a sine wave. That should now be a triangle wave because I've changed the uh, setting of the mode bit. What am I doing wrong? Well now, I've got a triangle wave. Look at that. And I can switch it on and off. But I did have to do a bit of lateral thinking. I've actually put a four in here, which means that um, D2 is being set high. Now that's a reserved bit and doesn't do anything, but it's actually actioning the function of D1. So there is some bit slip in here. Basically, the whole serial word is one bit out of sync. And uh, I've now moved reset. I'm now doing an O2 here. So reset is actually bit D9, which is also reserved. Um, but it's actually controlling bit D8. And previously, I think I was putting it into sleep. So uh, the DAC, uh, M clock, uh, clock is disabled and the DAC output remains at the present value. And that's what was happening. The DAC output was remaining at the present value. So it was actually receiving a sleep and not a reset. 
So it's all one bit out of sync. Now that's probably something to do with the shift out command. I can't remember whether the shift out command starts, uh, or what's the sync of the shift out command. I seem to remember there is a way of changing it by changing the initial value of S clock, but I can't remember the details of it. So I seem to have been caught out by a peculiarity of the shift out command. If I switch to uh, my browser, the shift out command says uh, each bit is written in turn to a data pin, after which a clock pin is pulsed, taken high, then low. So I assume it's left low at the end of the shift out command. And that's a problem for this data sheet here, because this requires that when F-Sync is taken low, S-Clock is high. So anyway, I fixed the problem by putting in a digital write S-Clock high prior to taking F-Sync low, and then just letting the shift out do what it does. So I'm bound that back now to my proper data as I would expect it to be and I can put out sine waves, and I can put out triangle waves, and everything is good. And uh, now I've got some nice jiggery pokery with reading the uh, value of which key is being pressed. So I've got a sine wave on my first penny, and a triangle wave on the second one. Brilliant. So triangle, triangle, yes it's consistent, sine, sine. Now we're getting somewhere. And I've discovered I can uh, very rapidly switch between these two keys and therefore switch between triangle and sine, which is great fun, isn't it? Great fun. Well, now I've managed to get a sort of crude frequency control. Uh, switching between these first two uh, coins, I can switch it from a low frequency, 140 kilohertz, to a higher frequency. Uh, what's that? About 1.6 megahertz. Not quite sure why my scope is showing it a little bit broken up. I have to be a little bit decisive about my on and offs on these two coins. Now the way I'm switching between those two frequencies is not by writing to the frequency registers. I'm still actually trying to get my head around uh, this control word, but there is this F select on bit D11. The F select bit defines whether the frequency zero register or the frequency one register is used in the phase accumulator. So there are two registers that hold frequency uh, data and I'm simply flicking between them. Not quite sure why the chip has these two registers, but uh, let's take a look at them in further up in the data sheet. And uh, yes, right here on page one of the data sheet, we can see here's the frequency zero register, here's the frequency one register, and there's a multiplexer to switch between them um, for what gets fed into the phase accumulator. So that's all I'm doing, flicking between these two. There are also these phase registers. I don't think they're going to bother me. I'm not interested in altering phase. There's also two phase registers. So you can set up two words of data in there and then flick between them with another multiplexer. So in a way, that's it. I mean, I've got two keys on my organ playing two different frequencies. They're random frequencies because the data in the frequency registers in this little chip is random because I've not written anything in there yet, and there's nothing to hear yet because these frequencies are, uh, well, I'm not connected to an audio system and they're way above audio frequency anyway. But uh, I think I'm gonna stop there because the light's dropping a bit now. Um, and I'm just gonna push on uh, teaching myself how this chip works, writing to these frequency registers, and then uh, writing these frequencies in so that I can reproduce that uh, scale in C major um, using the little frequency generator. But uh, yeah, for the moment, that's been quite an interesting afternoon. Cheerio.